Happy uh, Martin Luther King Day to everybody. Doing black rejoiners today. That's as creative as we get on this program. Look Thank what we do now. Enjoy the brilliance that is the Opie and Anthony program. We're right on top of things. Yeah. Hey, guys, Martin Luther King Day is Monday. What do you want to do? Uh, let's, like, play black music. Uh, okay. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, I don't know. We're not very good at <laughs> diversity. <laughs> Hey, it's uh, the ONA virus. We're spreading it across America, like it or not. We know nothing about Martin Luther King. We know nothing. We know nothing that we can like throw together that would be a, a fitting tribute. Cause we're just stupid. Well, a lot of radio uh, guys they play that YouTube Pride and then uh, this like Martin Luther uh, King speeches that are in the song. Yeah, maybe we can find that and we'll play that for everybody today. Everyone just knows the "I Have a Dream" yeah speech, or there, just that part of it. There was another good one. Uh, we were talking about getting to the mountaintop. I yeah, mean, that, that one. That was a great one, too. Yeah. Ain't No Mountain High Enough, that one? No. No, he kind of segued into that. He did a song parody at the end. That <laughs> <laughs> well, was great. No Mountain High Enough. Hey, we all get off, though, for, for Martin Luther King Day now. He's a real womanizer. Except for us. Martin Luther King, man. They yeah, he liked the... Didn't like he ladies. like the white puss, too, right? I don't Ooh, know. I really? know that they said in Malcolm X, they, like the FBI agent said that X was a monk <clears throat> compared to King. Really? Malcolm X didn't cheat on his wife. He was like a real religious guy, but King is that real or is that just stuff that they did back then, like spread around rumors and stuff to just dis discredit the guy? Well, no, they would have loved to. They couldn't discredit Malcolm X that way. Dude, that's why. Yeah. That's why they, you know, I, I there's I, rumors I, that he was involved with Abernathy, you know, in some weird. Thing. Yeah, I don't believe it. That's why he was marching all over the place. He had, yes. he had uh, white chicks all over the place. He had to go visit, finding some girls. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, the way that's a great way to get out of the house, you know. I gotta go do some marching. I have to march today, honey. <laughs> baby, baby, I've got to go march today. I have seen the mountaintop, and there are white broads all over it. Uh, I don't know. I, I tend to think maybe they were trying to discredit him a little bit and kind of threw around those rumors. Possible. But who knows? Yeah. I'm not possible. educated enough about him to know uh, if those things are true. Well, the South is checking in. They're saying it's also Robert E. Lee's birthday today. Is that true? Stop it. Is it? I don't know. We'll have to look it up. That would be a hell of an ironic coinky dink. All right. Well, uh, Norton's back in studio. He missed Friday's show because he was in Chicago at Zany's. How did that go? I uh, I really enjoyed myself, man. It was one of, my, one of the most fun I've had at the club. i got to thank Zany's for not dropping checks. There's like two or three clubs in the country that don't drop checks. Them and the Struss Factory. Drop checks. That means in the middle of the headliner set, at like you do 45 minutes to an hour, so at like 35 minutes, oh, I know put what the checks drop. down. Yeah. And it just it oh. ruins. Of course the, it does. And the comedy seller doesn't do it to you either, of course not, because they're a great club. Hmm. But it ruins the flow of the show because everybody's looking at the checks, paying the bill. Right. But these wow, scumbag clubs, it's awful. Yeah, it's like a table of uh, five, six people, and the bill comes like, okay, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Trying to split it. How much money do you have? What, what? And the comedian is still trying to do his thing. Up table there. full of six earls that none of them want to pay the bill. Oh, not not one of them digging into their pocket for a dollar. Yeah, it's really frustrating, man. Wow, you know, I never got, even thought of that. We got the one alcoholic friend that had like 15 beers, and you had you were sipping one beer, and ah, we'll all just split it, right? Hey, split it. And you sound like an ass if you bring it up. Yeah. But yeah, and usually the last part of any comedian set is his real strong stuff. He wants to end strong, and, and people could care less because they're trying to figure out their bills. Yeah. It was so... I mean, the fact that Zanies didn't... The only thing that bothered me about Zanies, I haven't worked in a club with, with smoke in it in a while. So, like, you know, you could still oh, smoke in right. that club in half the room, and uh, it gave Brutal. me a sore throat. Yeah, well, it's like, I mean, you know, I just get spoiled being in Manhattan. You on the road, and that's what you got to... Uh, you know, I was one of the first people to be like, damn that Bloomberg. Yeah, you know, too. taking the cigarettes. People should be able to smoke wherever they want. But when you go into a club now, uh, out of state, it just, it is, and you're closed the next oh. morning. Just read, because usually you just take them off and throw them on the floor next to the bed. When you wake up and get out of bed, it's just... This waft of smoke. You do forget. And bar. Well, the, yeah, the whole Vegas thing, you know? Yep. Yeah. It was yeah. just brutal. And now, you know, you go into, you work at a club in New York, or you go in there uh, to drink or hang out. Uh, it's amazing. It's just no smoke. You got to love it. Chicago represented very nicely. The shows were not sold out because we're just starting up there, but it was actually better than I thought it was going to be. And there was quite a few. Uh, O and A fans there. Oh, I was, really? I was really surprised. Yeah, I mean, cool. it was like most of the people that came to see me 
came to see me from the show. It was really great to see that it's really building nicely and quickly. Nice. So uh, they thank you guys for coming out, man. It was fantastic. You're all nice right now. He called me last night. I'm trying to eat this stupid pop tart, but uh, I see. <clears throat> You were, like, uh, just livid last night. You called me up, and you wanted me to remind you about uh, Comedy Club here in New York. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to give them one more day. Because what I'm, the process I'm in right now is uh, the Tonight Show called and said that they wanted me to send a second sex. I had done the one. And they're like, hey, we'd like to see the other Ooh. one. Ooh. But um, And then I didn't do it, and they called again. Bob and Ross, they go, look, we'd love to see the set. Could you send it? So what I'm doing this week is I'm just doing quick sets at the comic strip and uh, stand-up New York, going and doing four and a half to five minutes to try to time out the set. So I called another comedy club that has a VCR, and I'm like, can I just come in this week and do these five-minute sets? And uh, they gave me the runaround last night. I'm like, well, uh, we kind of got a full thing tonight. Call them. We'll see tomorrow. And this is the same club that when I was doing the Tonight Show and I said, look, can I get on and just do these four-minute sets? I'm going out to L.A. next week. They gave me a hard time. Uh, oh boy. Well, you know, we don't know. So if if it's if if they don't put me on, you know, I'm really gonna bad mouth them. But it's like maybe last night they were booked. So, oh good, we can expect the bad mouthing. Yeah, it just annoys me. Now you're man. making me hope they don't put you on. Yeah, they probably they're, won't. They're not gonna put him on. Nah, the, the manager's kind of a douche. Oh, he, he doesn't know anything about comedy. I'm like, my manager's called. They're like, look, he's doing the Tonight Show. He's booked for next week. Mm -hmm. Can he get on and just work this set to time it and make sure? It's, now nah, we got a full thing today. This is what they told me back in September. Jesus, it's like what, what's wrong with you? Bastards! Why do you think we work for twenty dollars a set? You think I, you think I need twenty bucks a night or ten bucks a night with city clubs pay? Yeah, it's when you when you when you need a club, it's Gotham. That's Gotham Comedy Club. Oh, That's okay. the one that is giving me problems. And it's like when you need to do this kind of stuff. This is career making stuff, or it helps your career. Yeah, and they're going to give you a runaround. Night show for God's sake! Really aggravating, man. Really aggravating. So we'll see what happens tonight. But, uh, of course, the comic strip knows that. Stand Up New York knows that. Dangerfields knows that. Every club in the city will will extend that courtesy to you. Right. I know the owner of that club for 10 years. He used to do stand-up. Uh, and I don't think it's coming from him, but it's very frustrating. You Every talk club to knows him. It. I did, but Say, it's like, hey, get a little, you know, hey, 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 hey. Come on now. Hey. I did talk to him, and he said, no, man, it's no problem. We'd like to have you. And then all of a sudden, the, the manager's doing this again. You know, like, we just got a full schedule. I've seen the schedule. Then yeah. I'm not saying they're bad comics, but, like, I've been bumped a thousand times by Attell and all these other guys. I never mind. I'm at the cellar sometimes, and the Conan's people go, hey, so-and-so's doing Conan tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, put him up in front of me. I don't care. Go up. Do your six minutes. Do what you got to do, man. Mm -hmm. We all extend that courtesy to each other. Every club in New York has accommodated me. Every time I've been in L.A., they've always accommodated for a TV thing, except for the Gotham Comedy Club. Comedy Club Diva. Comedy Club Diva. He actually wants five minutes when he's doing a television show. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I guess I'm not clean enough for that room. I think they tend to like, you know, the comedy oh. cell is where you go if you want to get punched in the stomach and laugh. If your grandmother comes in from Albuquerque and you want to take her to a club, go to Gotham. There's nice fun for everyone entertainment. So, oh, good. yeah, give him a little plug. Sure. Give him a little plug. Thanks once again. I appreciate that. Thank you once again for accommodating me. Very nice. That doesn't sound very good. No, nah, it stinks. It stinks. Ah. You done with your Pop-Tart? No. Nah. Nice. I missed the uh, 10 to 15 minute commercial breaks. You could get a lot done. Yeah, now a lot of have... eating going on. Well, a lot of people get pissed on the instant feedback and stuff and the email. We go stop eating live on the show, but we have to. We it's, have to. It's breakfast time and we don't... That's what uh, radio guys do when the commercials start playing. They go take a dump. They smoke a mm. cigarette. Some of them do drugs. Some of them drink. When are we supposed to we get eat. our eat on? We eat. All right. One other thing from Jim Norton before we move on here. You just came in with the, the Village DVD, and you're, you're just completely outraged. He was livid when he came in. He's I'm holding it up. He was speechless. He just holds it up so we can look at it, and he's just like, this... You notice what time you came here to? Like yeah. 5.20. We're like, what's wrong? You have a fever or something? Been up all night. Um, but he walks in with the DVD just in his hand. It's yeah. not even his bag or whatever. Well, he doesn't have any of that stuff. He just throws a coat on and comes mm -hmm. in here. Why? Oh, never mind. But he's holding the DVD and he's just ranting and raving about it. Yeah. I bought in this a bad in, way. in Chicago. And I'm tempted to get on a plane and go get a refund. This, <laughs> this that bad. piece of crap could be the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I actually, at one point, thought that the, this this uh, M. Night Shyamalan, whatever, Shyamalan, yeah, Ding whatever, Dong, exactly, is awful. 
I thought this might be a comedy. I'm like, this, this, this can't be serious. The acting was atrocious. Atrocious. The story was atrocious. The village. I would have liked this more if it was about Greenwich Village. And instead of red cloaks, they all wear chaps and drank out of each other's mules. <laughs> Everything you've done... With freshly bleached hair. <laughs> yeah, starring, I was going to say, starring Martini <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Bunch of cozy creatures in the woods in the village. They're not, they're not monsters, they're bears. They just hug you if you cross the magic line. Beware the sweet face. <laughs> it was not a horror film. I thought the acting was good. Now, the acting was atrocious. I now, when... now, looking at the commercials for it, it was presented like some type of horror film yep. in the same vein as uh what was the other movie you put out six cents which was uh, great no signs and yeah and signs he put out signs so i, I was thinking it was going to be like that i have not i have not seen this uh movie oh but don't worry you could ruin it for me i don't care i won't ruin it for you but i'll tell you who will uh joaquin phoenix whose next film should be called break dancing in front of the viper <laughs> awful you didn't like his acting when it uh, stunk. When the retarded uh, character in the in the oh, film, Adrian Brody uh, um, stabbed him. The, that was the only. No, I actually liked when he got stabbed. I didn't like the fact that he did live. The only part of the movie I liked is when when Adrian Brody's face got slapped because a retard being slapped is always amusing. <laughs> always amusing. <sighs> Sigourney Weaver stunk. Now, now these are, you're saying the acting's horrible. William Hurt, but William Hurt's a great actor. He was. Awful. Sigourney Weaver is a very good actress. Sure. She is, yeah, I suppose so. She's Star studded cast, I might add. I, it was amazing how. Didn't Brody win a, an Oscar? He certainly did for the, the, for the uh, penis. The, 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 yeah, the piano. <laughs> the penis. The penis? Was the, the penis? Yeah, the pianist. The pianist. Uh, who else? Who, who's the chick? Her last name is Howard. Something mm. Howard. Yeah. Some, not ripping me uh, off, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Brianna, uh, she was atrocious. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Really? So the the acting horrific. I I thought it was as a goof. This, there's a clip here where she this one woman is like thinking of proposing marriage to Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. And I this I thought like this was like meant to be a comedy. I'm like this has to be ironic. She can't really be acting. So she gets up all the courage and she walks up to him. Um, it's supposed to be like this 1800s setting. Yeah. And he's like uh he's sharpening a sword. And uh, if you if you got the first clip, this is what she said. This is her uh, pr like telling him that she loves him. Good afternoon, Lucius. I wanted to to tell you something. I love you, Lucius. <laughs> I love you. Like the day is long. I love you more than the sun and the moon together. And if you feel the same way, then we should not hide it any longer. It's a gift, love is. We should be thankful. We it's should bellow it out with all the breath in our lungs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's the next scene after he like doesn't react. That's her crying. I just wanted that in there because that's how I felt watching this film. <laughs> do you realize that... Wow, that acting is really bad. That's, that's... It's like listening to Blair's cousin Jerry do Shakespeare. <laughs> it's horrible. That's Bryce oh. Dallas Howard. Oh, dude, Ron's it, daughter. It, that is Ron's daughter. It I, is. I, I'm like, it has yeah. to be his daughter. Yeah, it for is. Her to get acting work, she is atrocious. Well, the reviewers I remember at the time thought she did a fantastic job with this movie. Oh, uh, really? It was, uh, yeah, that's what I'm. You know, just saying. Now just it's saying. not a it's not a horror movie by any stretch of the imagination. Well, they they no. definitely marketed it as a, a horror. Yes, they did. Uh, flick, and when I saw it. When the credits, you know, started rolling, everyone got really pissed off. People started throwing some of their refreshments, going, "That's really? it, that's it, that's it." One of it? those movies this that is, ends, and you're like, "Oh no, BS. don't you dare roll the credits." Yeah, this is BS. This, that's it. I actually, I also had Steve uh, Joaquin Phoenix has this this thing he does. Um, he's he's on the same like success path as you know Jim Belushi, or name someone else who had a more gifted brother kick the bucket at a young age. Um, oh, and uh, he does this thing where he whispers because uh, he really is not a good actor. So to get emotion, he whispers, and that's his way of uh, being passionate. Is uh, he whispers, and uh, it's enragingly bad <laughs> because I don't know why actors somehow think that that makes you seem passionate. It does. Really? It makes you seem hoarse. It's awful. So I have a thing of him and Bryce. Okay. I think this is Bryce or the other thing bad. This right? is Joaquin's monologue, I believe. I love this it's, Jimmy's it, review. It's just him and her talking, 
and uh, she says something, and, and this is, he's passionate. When we are married, will you dance with me? I find dancing very agreeable. Why can you not say what is in your head? Why can you not stop saying what is in yours? <laughs> Why must you lead when I want to lead? If I want to dance, I will ask you to dance. If I want to speak, I will open my mouth and speak. Everyone is forever blank. You just speak forever. I would just like to know why he does that. I would like to know why he always asks. He does do that in a lot of roles. Oh, Here's why. why. He stinks. <laughs> Oh, oh, Joaquin. Oh. Anybody with a silent J in the beginning of their name You're is going to stink. Yeah. That's a, that wasn't his thing, though. <laughs> Opie, how do you find your coffee? Is it good? It's very good. How many splendors do you put in it? One. I can't believe it. One. <laughs> and M. Knight should be, he really should be good gutted for <laughs> writing this dialogue she says to him on our wedding night will you dance with me i find dancing to be agreeable <laughs> how do you go through a read through with a bunch of actors and she says that and somebody doesn't throw hot coffee at her how does that happen <laughs> i swear to god because yeah. they're all agreeable in hollywood i was teetering thinking that this might be some kind of an ironic parody of horrible acting really it was atrocious. william hurt is a good actor, and he stinks in it. Nobody was good. I didn't get any Sigourney stuff. I believe me. No. I can go back through it and have some later this week. She also was atrocious. Now, what is it about the story that is so bad? Well, what's happening in the film, and I won't give it away, is that there are... Uh, it, it's a I kind of like the idea. Yeah. That, well, that's what? a we part company. It's a I part. have no idea what it's about. It's people like... It's, it's like a, an 1800 setting. Right. And they live in this little village, and they're walled off from the forest. They don't go into the forest, and the creatures, uh, who apparently are acting coaches, don't come into their village. <laughs> the creatures stay in the forest, and red is the bad the color. Forest. The forest. Don't go into the forest. <laughs> don't, go, don't go into the forest. <laughs> you know, don't go into the forest or anywhere near the Golden Globes. <laughs> so uh, they stay in the village. And, of course, you're going to have that overachiever that has to go in the forest. Of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, that, that's the bad part of the movie. So far, you... nothing bad. Yeah, but you As know somebody the, but, that knows nothing about this. But that's what I hate about Hollywood. You could, you know, you watch these movies like, oh, let me guess. There's going to be an overachiever that has to, has yeah. to push the limits All of right. the village and has to go see what's out there. Well, because this is such an original concept, there is a Council of Elders, which was just such uh, a conceptually brilliant thing for a film. And at one point, I don't want to give anything away, Joaquin Phoenix is uh, stabbed by retard Adrian Brody, stabs him when he finds out that Joaquin is going to, oh, I hope I didn't spoil it for anyone, is going to marry the girl that he likes, who's blind, by the way. Uh, <laughs> not the one who said, I love you, we should shout it. Not that one, no. but the one who said, I would like to dance. Dancing is agreeable, I guess, because you'll never drive, whore, because you're blind. <laughs> She's the one who... Uh, the 1800s. <laughs> yeah, that was a well, good point. Um, well... It's but, the, but it's not the 1800s, uh, Anthony. Uh, uh, oh, Whoops! Oh, oh no! Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh no! No! You wrecked it! Oh oh oh! Wow! All right, now I, that's kind of a cool twist. Wait, it's not a cool twist. No, it stinks. It's not. There's one part where after <laughs> the girl wants to go into the towns for the medicine. Oh, I gotta recover from this. Yeah, that is a complete ruin of the movie. They have to go into the town wow. to, get, to get medicine for for Joaquin. For or he's Joaquin gonna die. Phoenix is gonna die. Because, and, see, they're living like it's the 1800s. Of course. But his injury is such that there's medicine that, that they have to get from the town. The town. Yeah. So she's preparing to go into the woods. The blind girl is going to walk through the woods to the town. Because she's the best choice. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And William Hurt gives a speech to the other elders because they're like, look, you're risking what we built here, this private thing, by sending her into the town where she may you know, run into Sanford Meisner. So this is exactly what's going on. And William Hurt, I took some of his, his, his monologue to the other elders. The elders. And uh, this is his bit of overacting atrocity, right? Who do you think will continue this place, this life? Do you plan to live forever? It is in them that our future lies. It is in Ivy and Lucius that this, this way of life will continue. Yes, I have risked. 
I hope I am always able to risk everything for the just and right cause. Ooh, yeah. That that's... makes my skin crawl. And, I, and again, I can't blow the ending, but the fact is that the whole movie, you think it's the 1800s, mm -hmm. and then she crosses a fence and sees a park ranger, and you do realize that they're living in modern times. And by the way, there are no creatures. They're just red suits that the elders keep. The el there's no creatures. It's no the, creatures. The, the elders have these red creature suits. And every once in a while they throw them on just to scare. And go into the woods and kind of come out of the well, woods. Sometimes yes. they come into the actual village. Oh, yeah. Scare them a little bit just to keep them under control. Uh -huh. the, the elders are Hence all... religion and fear in society, everybody. Yes. Hence religion and fear in society. He had a message. It certainly wasn't good film writing. Hey, do the elders know about that? Like about the what times they're living in oh yeah yeah they, they were oh, so the elders no the elders were all crime victims in real life so they decided to build this peaceful crime this perfect, place. perfect society perfect society so what we learn is even a perfect society has a problem and in right. this case it was uh it was the retard the guy. writing and the directing yeah <laughs> so i hope any of you that thought of went out to buy this dvd I hope I ruined it for you. There's no creatures. It's there, there might be two scary moments. The the ho most horrifying part is when the credits roll and you realize you got suckered in to buying this piece of garbage. It is horrendous. Everything he's done since the Sixth Sense has gotten progressively worse. But he's making a Everything. statement about religion and how religion controls a society and 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 how fear controls a society. Yes, from this, here's, from, from free thinking. Here's from, a statement about religion he's making. You can strap this film to your your waist and run onto a bus in Tel Aviv. It is horrendous. <laughs> the village stunk. Now, if you ask me, not having seen the movie, but now having been uh, told the plot and everything, <laughs> it sounds like a Twilight Zone. <laughs> It sounds like it could be a Twilight Zone episode. But terribly done, and the writing was so weak, and the story was so weak. Had they thrown that twist at the end, and it was well acted and well done and scary, it might have been it like, sound Whoa. Look, on the outside, not see having seen the movie, it, it I sounds it, like a good idea. It was a good idea. I it thought, actually sounds like a good idea for a movie. Right. Atrocious. I was livid when I was... Do you understand? I wanted to go to bed last night. I took cough medicine that makes me sleepy. Instead, I said, let me whack my bag one time and then watch this, and I couldn't sleep. I was so aggravated. Wow. And I think the final, um, one of the final lines of the movie was, uh, my darling, my blood. No. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. And then... <laughs> No? No. Wrong film. I, I oh, I'm sorry. That's the end of another film. I really hope that somebody out there was planning on buying well, this DVD and it's ruined for Really you. fast, because a couple people want to defend the movie. Oh, uh, yeah? Jimmy, Eric from Nebraska. Eric? Of course. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up, Nebraska? Well, you know, I, I've been listening to your show since October. Love the show, you know, but... Uh, I hate the know, show myself, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Jimmy... Uh, maybe you should go out and get a hooker because uh, you seem to be in a really pissed off mood this morning. The village is an awesome movie. Hey, listen, Everything. first of all, you only you live in Nebraska. You just like it because with the 1800s, that looked like futuristic and modern <laughs> to what you're used to out there. The movie oh, stunk. Someone doesn't like wide open spaces, eh? I love like wide open spaces. Eric, what what did you like about the movie? Well, you know, I've watched all of M. Night Shyamalan's work, and he's a hell of a writer in the sense that he will drag you one way and then give you that plot twist at the end. Yeah, like oh, everybody else in Hollywood does now. You go left, you go right, and there's the guy in the middle with no money going, hey, what do you want from me? It <laughs> oh, stinks. Hell, it it looks familiar. Money, <laughs> you know, not everybody can be wrong. And, you know, you're a hell of a comedian, but uh, apparently you don't know shit about acting. I know a lot about acting, and I know awful acting. Dude. I, I Believe me, I don't. I like good actors. I'm disgusted that Jamie Foxx didn't win Best Actor. They only won Best Actor for a musical comedy. Great. I know a lot about acting. You've come... Back. Back. And every once in a while, uh, Hollywood will surprise you and throw you a twist, because I really thought that Morgan, uh, Morgan Freeman was going to be the one that died. Uh-huh. Well, you know. All right, now just, I know. I just wanted to spend the movie a little bit here and say hello to you guys. Uh, Dude. You know, maybe my, right. maybe my the, words ain't worth much, and that's fine. But, no, the village. Uh, all right, all right. Dude, the village was atrocious. The twist, it cheated. It, the story was so weak and all over the place and boring. 
You know, that's cornball love story between that dullard Joaquin Phoenix and this stupid blind broad who walks through the woods, and then Adrian Brody at the end escapes because he killed somebody, tried to kill somebody, and then he puts on the red monster suit, and she stands in front of an open hole and then steps away at the right moment, and Adrian Brody, Brody runs and falls and dies in the hole. Oh, the blind okay. girl found the hole in, in the woods <laughs> and knew to step away, so the retard in the monster costume, <laughs> and this idiot from Nebraska is calling up like it's Citizen Kane. It's <laughs> Stunk. All right, Bob from Jacksonville oh. wants to defend the village as well. Go ahead, Bob. Morning, shit, Dick. How you doing? Home man? of the Super Bowl. Hey, Jimmy, stick the comedy, man. <laughs> I, I thought I thought the movie it was a little frustrating through the middle of it, and toward the end, it just all came together, man. I love that movie. Yeah, but it, it, you know what it seems like to me? Again, not having seen the movie, it seems like a, a, a story like that where the end is the big twist. Yeah, that you got to yeah. then fill up the entire movie with some type of story. Yeah. Like, you, you could have, all right, it's the 1800s, uh, Monsters in the Woods. Uh, at the end, we're going to show you it's not the 1800s, and go. Now you got to fill it up with what, a crappy love story was in there? See, the whole, the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. thing was, here's what he was trying to do. Here's what he was trying to do. He was rushing. He thought he had this brilliant plot twist and this amazing ending. So the whole film was basically built to try to justify this like thing he right. probably envisioned. And it was crap. When you look at The Sixth Sense, that was, a, to me, great. It was yeah, a great yeah. movie. It was well written. It was believable. It caught me off guard. It blew me away. This was crap. I wanted to be blown away, and it made me physically ill. It could have been a half-hour Twilight Zone. Dude, yeah. it was. The Twilight Zone would have done it better. Yeah. They would have done it right. Hmm. They would have known hey. how to act. All right. Let's go to Chris in New York. Chris, go ahead. How you doing? Hey, Hi, good, Chris. Man. Uh, I went to the movie over the weekend. Actually, I bought it. Yep. One of my friends recommended it to me, and uh, after I was done watching it, I drove by his house and threw it out his window. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, I, I bought it, too. I'm so aggravated. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's go to Johnny B. on Long Island. Johnny B. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Johnny B. Hi, Carlo Bunny. Hi, Johnny B. Jimmy, I got to defend you 100%. I have never been to a movie where everybody in the movie theater for opening night said, wow, that sucked. Yep. Yeah, that's what I got when I went. Everyone was like around me going, I can't, what? That's I it? I got to see it just to see how bad it is. No, no, Alone no, in my DVD. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. And don't even bother. What are you thinking about seeing Napoleon Dynamite? Don't. Don't. I saw Napoleon Dynamite. You like? Uh, it was really weird, but the, it's it's funny. It's funny. It's one of the. It's a goofy movie. I mean, uh, it, it doesn't funny. really have a, a real story to it, but the characters are kind of funny enough that it carries it. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Sure. I think if you watched it a few times, it's one of those movies that if you watch a few times, you'll get certain parts of it that really make you laugh. Yeah. Trevor in Jersey. Trevor. Hey guys. Hey. The uh, the retard's parents la crying at the end. Went after they found out he was dead, made up the whole rest of the movie for me. I thought that made the whole movie. Why was it funny? Yeah, you didn't laugh your ass I'm off. I'm trying to remember that, the, that Ivy killed a monster in the woods, and the parents just started crying their eyes out. Well, yeah, because they knew it was the retard. But by that point, dude, I was crying with them because I had sat through it. It was horrible. How did they well, get around? Like, how did they get around? Like, Things like airplanes and stuff. Oh, 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 they, they tried to cover that. There's a scene, this this arrogant ass put himself in a scene because he thinks he's Hitchcock. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he put himself I in forgot. Yeah, he also. has to be in all his movies. And That's after right. they realize that it's actually modern times, one of the park rangers is talking to his boss, and he's going like, hey, man, look, you're only there to guard the preserve. It's some kind of wildlife preserve that we're a couple miles in, and we pay the planes off not to fly over. It, it oh, was like the cheapest tie-in. Way out. Yeah, dude, it was such a cheap, like, let's tie this loose end without any real thought into it. Yeah. It stunk. And the village itself, how big was it about? Right. Oh, a few houses, five Just or six, six houses. Five or six it was like houses. A, little, uh, a little village. So it could have been in there without being detected. For... Red was the bad color. <laughs> Apparently the entire script was written in it. How many, how many years had they been there? Well, I, I guess the, uh, the the people who started, you have to assume these adult children had been there since since childhood or whatever, or adulthood. Maybe so 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, 20 maybe. years. The yes. elders came in 20 years. The uh, elders. The elders. All right, one more. James from Connecticut, then we'll move on. Go ahead, James. Yeah, I agree with you, little Jimmy. That movie sucked. Sucked. My wife bought it, and it made a big thing about it. We're sitting in front of the TV, surround sound. The best part was when she <laughs> fell in that hole. Yeah. It sucked. Dude, I was so mad, I wanted to throw myself in front of a train. 
Oh, and to compare it to the Twilight Zone, oh, you just killed the Twilight Zone. That was way better. Hey, did you see? I, I tell you what, what blew me away that I absolutely loved and I thought was going to be overrated. I saw Ray, and uh, I thought that was phenomenal. I didn't expect to like it. I'm like, ah, this will probably be blown out of proportion, but it was great, oh. man. It was horrible, but I agree with you. Punch Does he die guy. at the end? Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he actually, he actually like winks and says, "I can see." Oh, uh, one. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to another move on. Hollywood twist. Yeah, I'm trying to move on, but there's one more here. Let's say hi, to Eric. Go ahead, Eric. Oh, uh, hi, Owen. Hey, love the show. How you doing, Cuddle Bunny? Hey, what's up, Eric? I was just calling because the one major plot point that nobody's mentioned so far in that movie that sucked were those boxes of doom that were in every one of the elders' houses. Oh yeah. Oh. The the, the boxes, boxes of doom. They were not hidden. They were not uh, put out of sight. They were right in the middle of everybody's living room. What is it? And, well, there were boxes of newspaper clippings from their old lives, like boxes of you know the atrocities that happened to each elder. Like and in real like, life, every one of them had a loved one murdered or yeah. something, and that's why they all banded together and, uh -huh. and created this little place Perfect where society. There, there was no crime or, or real acting or, or any type of directing <laughs> or writing. This little magical place where any twist you throw in is going to wrap the audience up into a Jim, new little package. their own uh, Nirvana. Their exactly. own Nirvana. Excellent they point. They had these boxes out in plain sight, and it was just horrible because nobody even looked in the boxes. Yeah. And, and dude, the, they kept everything. All right. Anyway, the, fact, the movie sucked. I'm punching out. It was just uh, awful. And the, and the monster costumes were horrible. Yeah, what, what, what were they? Well, it was like a red cloak, because all you know, monsters have red cloaks, cloaks. And a big, dumb monster face. And it looked like it had thin branches coming out of its back. It was corny and awful. Uh -huh. I saw more believable monsters on Davy and Goliath. They were <laughs> scarier as claymation than these awful monsters were. All right. Well, why don't we take a break? We get the point. A it review stunk. of The Village states that Shamalama Ding Dong lifted the surprise ending almost directly from A Hundred Yards Over the Rim, an episode of The Twilight Zone starring Cliff Robertson that originally aired in 61. I remember that one. A uh, ship goes up into space, um, crashes on some planet. Uh, the astronauts uh, kill each other off, like, uh, or at least one of them is really crazed and, and killing the other ones off to to get their water and, and, and supplies so he could live a little longer. And they're looking for any type of stuff to keep him alive, water, a lake, something. And um, one guy climbs over the rim, looks down, and sees a telephone pole and a road and realizes they had crashed back on Earth and they weren't on a distant planet. So kind of kind of similar twist. Yeah, if you're going to put a twist at the end, uh, you know, just make it believable. Make sure, you know, it's... it's it, Stephen King talked about it in uh, in Misery, where Kathy Bates' biggest complaint in the book was that he cheated on one of the books. Like, he oh, cut yeah. to a different point without the logical progression. That's what this did. So it's you're cheated. saying he should be hobbled? <laughs> I absolutely believe that. <laughs> I, I hope that M. M. Night faces a hummel in the wrong direction. Because actually, in the book, <laughs> in the book... And Stephen King is good. In the book, yeah. he wasn't hobbled. Uh, she took a hatchet and chopped yeah. his foot off and then blowtorched the wound. Nice. And she also cut off one of his fingers and put it in a birthday cake. <laughs> and the book was great. Much better. Wonderful. All right. So that should happen to him. Nice. Except it should be his writing hand put in a cake. So the next time he tries to type a twist, you're a dumb Indian and your movie stunk. Ugh. All right, let's take a break, Anthony. All right, Jimmy's movie review. Math I like, nerd. It. We like it. We like your movie review. I like it.